Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I turn this 1970s era couch into this modern piece, completely reupholstered and with a completely new look. This piece I did over quite a bit of time, I broke it down into a lot of phases and I'm going to talk about each of those in this video. This was my first major upholstery project or something this size, but I had done one before which was this piece here, which is an antique 1800s Victoria era nursing chair, which I completely reupholstered from scratch as well. And that was the first project I'd done with any sort of really significant upholstery techniques. So this piece here, I actually bought this around 15 years ago. Um, it was a piece where there was a couple of reasons why I wanted to reupholster it. One was that I was really not liking the color of it. And I wanted to paint the timber sections. So I wanted to have this moved away from just timber into a, a completely different color scheme. I wanted to have brand new seat foam because the cushions really had started to wear and didn't really have much life to them anymore. And I also wanted to have brand new webbing on the base because that had completely broken down and was really sagging and it wasn't a comfortable thing to sit on. So the couch itself is a reproduction of a, as I understand it, a French style Louis XIV sofa three seater. Um, I think it's a 1970s original um, piece. From that point there though, all of the pieces you see here, I've got a lot of time lapse and I've got a lot of photos, but I didn't take a massive amount of video while I was doing it but I've got enough to sort of show you all the stages I went through. So when pulling apart this sort of couch, I really didn't know what I was going to find and, and what sort of techniques were going to be needed to make this. So what I did is I took a lot of photos as I pulled apart each phase of it. And I did that so that I could work out one, two, one, how I could reassemble the thing in what order and also some of the techniques they were using to overlap different fabric sections, for example. So areas where it needed to have no visible staples or where they were going to be hidden underneath the tacks. I needed to work out what order things were going to be done in to then redo it later on. And basically I re -engineer, reverse engineer the whole project to that extent. So things like here, the armrests, I didn't know what would be in there. I know that some of those areas, what I wanted to make better and have more foam in them or have more dense foam, I knew some of those areas from having lived with a couch. So in looking at what are the things I really wanted to find out, I wanted to see what foam was actually inside it, what density and what thickness of all the foams. I also wanted to see what padding was used in different areas. That just gave it a little bit extra where you could you could feel there was something behind it, but you couldn't tell if there was like a wadding or a foam or some other kind of padding. I also wanted to see what type of stapling techniques they were doing to hide it all. So in what sequence of things they were doing so that when I redid it, I could staple in the order that was needed to hide all the joins as much as possible. And I also wanted to see, in particular with the arms, how to get that shape around the armrest. I wanted to see how, because it tapers in towards the back and it has a nice full front. So I really wanted to see how that was done. So when I redid it with new foam, I could uh, achieve the same overall shape, but I wanted it to be more dense and um, have more resistance than the, the current foam was giving. So this piece originally also had the button tufting you'd see on the front section. And that, that's probably one of the harder bits of the whole project in terms of giving confidence that you can do it yourself. I had done one other button tufting project that I was doing kind of at the same time when I first started this couch, which was a bed head. And I made a, um, a large bed head piece with all button tufting. And that was like, uh, I guess a bit of a practice run to see how I might do 
um, to get some of that real look and to how, how to attach the, the back in particular to have a nice tension on it. And the other thing that I really wanted to do with this is to have a completely different fabric look. So the section I'm pulling apart here, again I'm breaking it down bit by bit. I needed to see what was behind the backrest and as you saw before there was actually like a main section but also then a thinner section behind that which I was a little bit surprised when I saw that. And then there's some strapping here to just give it some um, support but I found that again I think some of the components of this particular couch were a little bit on the cheaper end and so some of the the sort of nylon-y kind of um, interior fabric and some of the st the webbing um, for me was one that I wanted to vastly improve on by doing it myself. Pulling apart this, the armrests here as well, I found that that was really something where I didn't want to reuse any of the old foams. So that was something that as I did the project, I really worked through and worked out. the. To me, I didn't want to have anything which had like dust still in it or any sense of like broken down materials because again the couch is like quite old really. I bought it around 15 years ago but it probably dates from around the 1970s and some of the techniques they did with that foam of the armrest I thought I could improve upon with the final look rather than the way they'd come up with that piece where there was just multiple pieces that they've kind of then overlaid and wrapped with some um, kind of like a, a broken down felt wadding type material. So it took a long time to break it down to get the raw frame that you see here. And when I got to that stage, I thought, well, I'll find some local helpers to give it a bit of a sand down and smoothen down all the interior frame. Because again, that was still quite rough as well. And I wanted to improve on that before I started even painting it. The other thing I did think about at some stages were is this a sort of project I want to do myself or is it just too hard? Is this just too impossible to approach as someone with minimal upholstery experience and absolutely minimal tools to be able to achieve something like this? I did get a quote from a proper upholstery place to do the project and whilst it was like reasonable, I thought I wanted the challenge of being able to do it myself. So where you see here the seat cushions, the seat cushions are the one thing where I actually did go to an upholstery place to sew the covers. So the fabric itself I picked out, I really, I knew from the start I wanted to have a boucle sofa in this style. I've never seen that done before and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring in uh, a boucle. I wanted to bring in that certain colour and I painted the frame also to match that sort of boucle look and to give like a very different look versus the era of the actual furniture itself. So here you see all the webbing, I've now installed all that. Um, I've put roughly the same configuration webbing of what that was there before. I used on the base there a basket weaving style, so I've tried to use all the right techniques that the upholstery shop would actually use. And I've pulled the stuff as tight, but I actually did do it by hand. And I do think I, I got as much tension on that as I possibly needed. I've used really solid and good quality materials inside. So all the webbing I've sourced from a upholstery store. And we see here the interior backing fabric piece. Um, I've upgraded that significantly over what was there before. I had that as actually leftover fabric from when I did my cinema project and made acoustic panels. And I'll probably put some more videos of that project up in the future. So here I've got all of the interior lined and I've painted the frame. I'll just talk quickly about the frame. I spray painted the frame with proper um, paint spray. Um, so I wanted to get a really good finish on it. I thinned down the paint a little bit so that it would, it would coat really well and I had a proper paint sprayer that I've used on some other projects. I, I did that over several coats because I wasn't happy after one or even two so I went to probably three and then even did some touch-ups after that to get the best paint finish I could do. Here I've put the base 
that front edge, the front roll in. And now I started the challenge of how to get the foam in the right shape to have that tapered look, but something quite dense as well. The backrest here, I used the original fabric um, for the pattern of how to work out all the dimensions of the spacing between all the holes. So I've got a, a nice back piece of foam here and i am just marked it all out ready to drill all the holes. I did have a proper hole drilling piece that I got so that I could do that again the same way that a professional would do. And it's really important to get that spacing so that when you start doing your fabric over the top and you're pulling through the buttons, it's going to have a nice consistent look. Here you see I've drilled all the holes out. That took a while. It's sort of going slow and getting a nice clean finish with it. And now I'm using that same measurement on the fabric piece to get where I'm going to be pulling through the buttons. All the alignment of this was like really important to get done properly and to spend some time to mark it out and get all your measurements properly done. Now I've sort of fast forwarded to the bit where I've now pulled through, I've put the front fabric on and I've now pulled through and tied all of the button tufts from the back. I just used a real quick technique by using the whole of the what I drilled out, wrapped it in some of off cut fabric and used that to wrap around the button tufting so the button tufting doesn't pull and it's got a, um, a solid thing that won't slip through to the front. Now the first time you can see it from the front, all the buttons are all installed. It took ages to do that. And the finished piece here now, you can see where it's all painted up, the seat cushions are in, upholstery is completely finished and the overall project I was like super happy with. I did it over probably more than a year. I bought the fabric at one point. I was working on some other projects before I then came back and did this one. Once I started it, I took a couple of week, weekends to pull the old couch apart. And then it probably took another two weekends to paint the frame. I took a couple of days just on and off of like pulling out all the staples from the, the frame itself. And then the process of like reupholstering again, I probably did over probably even um, six to seven weeks to get to that stage. The last thing here is where I've tacked all the... Um, the finished look of the edge tacks where I've got in um, roughly meter long strips and just working through slowly and installing that. It um, goes pretty easily once you just sort of get the hang of it. It's got a pretty clean look. I was really happy with what I've achieved with it. And I think something like this, if you just tackle it, do all your research of how to get it done and work slowly and not be afraid to rework areas if you weren't happy with how it came out the first time, then you can get something which you'll be super happy with. So a couple of finished looks here. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for any future DIY videos that I might drop in the future. Thanks for watching everyone.